this tutorial I just want to introduce you to the interface of Sony Vegas Pro and show you a little bit of what you can do to customize the user interface and to start to give you a feel for what Sony Vegas is like and how quick and easy it is to use as a video editor. Now I'm going to do lots of bits and pieces which I'm going to go over again a bit later on so don't worry if you can't follow along with a lot of what's going on. Pay attention to the user interface options, but otherwise when I start adding footage in and what have you, don't worry about it, we will cover all of this again in future tutorials. So the first thing is we need to bring some footage in. Now when you first open Vegas Pro, if you've never used it before, you might not know even how to bring in footage. That's fine, you can go up to the menu, you can find file and you can go down and find import and you can go and find media and you can go and bring different bits and pieces in. There is also an explorer window notice down here you've got tabs at the bottom which is unusual usually tabs are at the top of a panel but these tabs are at the bottom there is an explorer window and you can go and find footage which we'll use in a minute however the other thing you can do is you can simply take footage from your own explorer so here's my windows explorer which has got through opening the start menu and going to computer and then navigating to where your footage is and then you can grab hold of a piece of footage and simply drag and drop it onto what this area down here is called the timeline and you see the little plus button that says it's going to add it to it and I've dragged it right up to the end and then I let go and then I get a question come up now the question says do you want to set your project video settings to match this media if you get that and it is the, the media that you're going to be using for your project say yes this is the footage I'm going to be using and this is what I generally want to do then you're going to say yes I do want to do that because if you've got say your footage is much too small you could end up with black bars around and you could end up with different sort of playback issues so if it is the footage you intend to work your project with and that first clip you bring in represents all the other clips that you're going to use then just click yes and then bang there's the footage showing in my preview window over here and you'll see that down here it's yellow showing me that it is selected and the new item that's being brought in and I've got this black line down here which is actually a playhead now you can move it in two ways you can grab the top here and when you grab the top it does actually play a little bit of audio as well it playing audio and it moves slowly but if you want to move quickly if you just hover over the line further down and drag it you can pull backwards and forwards really quickly now here's this clip down here in the timeline this is the timeline area I can see it up here but I also can see that at the end there's bits that I don't really want because the camera moves so I can go back to where I want it to finish say just after the second piece of C there and then I can hover over the end of the clip notice I get a two-way arrow and I can drag it back and it will snap you see it snaps to that playhead and then let go and that's trimmed and now when I pull my playhead backwards and forwards it's going to stop at that point and I won't have those bits that I didn't want at the end so that's a trim clip on the timeline notice also over here if I click in the project media you'll see that I've got the item brought into my project media and inside the project media I've got an icon showing me what it looks like I can change the way that looks even by going here to list or details I'm happy with a thumbnail but you can change the way it looks and it's actually been brought into my project now when I say brought in I don't mean it has been copied from some place on the computer to another place all I mean is that this is a link to the direct original piece of footage on my hard drive but also Sony Vegas has created another file you see here this is representing the audio file and we've got lots of lines here representing the peaks and troughs of audio if I just go back very quickly to that file notice I've got a little file next to the one that was brought in so it says surf over rock and I've now got one that says surf over rock .mpeg .sfk, which is a peak file basically it's showing all the peaks and troughs so the FSK file is really small if I hover over it you can see it's 64.6 .6 kilobytes it's really small whereas the actual video file itself is quite a large one 137 megabytes so don't worry if you start seeing new files added to your folder because they'll try and save them right next to the original footage don't worry they're very small files and all it is is redrawing this line very quickly okay so now that I've brought the item in I've seen a couple of panels I've seen where I'm going to see what's going on and I've got a play button and I've got a pause button and a stop button I can also by the way use my space bar so if I hit my space bar it plays and notice by the way this line is where the playhead was to start off with if I hit the space bar again it jumps back to that line so as you can see 
you've got play and stop on the space bar. There are other ways to play back, which I'll show you a bit later on. What else have we got? Well, we've got these panels that can be moved around. If I go back to this Explorer panel, this other tab here, and I look at all these pieces of footage, which is the same basically as a Windows Explorer, gives me the ability to be able to see all the items. It's a bit scrunched up and I can't see all my clips. But look here, I've got this little button just over here, which is a maximize one. And when I click it, it maximizes the panel horizontally. It compresses all the other ones, they're all still here, but it's compressed them. And I can see all my clips fully in this little panel. So if I want to go back again, I click that button just to say, go back to your ordinary position, and I can toggle open and close any panel I like. So if I want to, I can toggle open and close my main viewer by simply doing that. You can even shut panels down. So you say, well, actually, you know what? I don't need a particular panel. So say this panel in the middle here, which is called the trimmer window, which will come to you later. I could click it and get rid of it if I wanted to. Or you can hover between the two panels and you can pull between them or you can go below the two panels. So you can change the layout and the way things look. If you shut a window, so I accidentally shut the preview window, and I, and I think, oh my goodness, I needed that one. You can always find the window again under the view tab over here. So when you go to the view option up here, you'll see that you can bring back in the video preview window and uh, I'd need to readjust it here to get it showing. Or I can bring back in that one that was called the trimmer. Here's the trimmer window, there it is in the middle and I can change the way things look. But you can also move panels around. So say I want to take my video preview window for some reason and have it show somewhere else. You see these dots here. If you grab those dots, you'll see that the panel starts to sometimes float, sometimes it appears to dock. And you can dock it at the bottom of a panel or at the side of another panel or with another panel. But if you want it to float altogether so that you can have it on a separate monitor, you can hold the control key and then it will not try to dock. There are other options for second monitors. You can see there's something here actually which says preview on an external monitor. But if you want this on a separate monitor, so you've got a two monitor situation that you're working with, then you can simply move it around. Now, if you're not holding the control key, it will try to dock again. But if you are holding the control key, it will stay as a floating window until it goes to where you want it to be. So I could move it over here and I could have my audio bits and pieces in the middle if I liked. Or I could say, well, I want my trimmer window to fit at the bottom of, say, this panel here. And you can move things around however you like. And if you find a workspace that works for you, say we thought that workspace was better for us, then you can turn around and say, well, now that this workspace works for me, I want to be able to access it any time I open up Vegas Pro. So what you can do is you can go back to that view menu and you can go to Windows Layout and you'll see that you've got an option that says Save Layout As. And when I click Save Layout As, I can call it Test. Notice it's given a keyboard shortcut, so I can get to it very quickly. And I can click OK. And now, if I go back to the view, I go to Windows Layout, you'll see that I've got Test, and I've got a keyboard shortcut for it. Now, if I want to go back to my default layout, I can click Default Layout, and I'm back to exactly how it came out of the box. I suddenly want my other one, I can use the keyboard shortcut or I can go back to view, windows layout and go back to test and it's exactly as it was before. Notice also that you can go to view, windows layout and you can organize your layouts, you can save layouts, you can save layouts as, you can reload layouts and also you've got a series that have been created for other options such as audio mixing which brings audio panel forward and we've got another one there for color correction which will bring forward scopes, which will come to a lot later on. OK, I'm going to go back to the standard layout, Windows layout, and I'm going to go back to the default layout. So now we've had a very quick look at bringing bits and pieces in. Let's just add a couple of other bits to our timeline. And I'll just show you a couple of minor things. Go to the Explorer, and I can choose a different clip. Let's just choose this clip here, drag it down to the timeline, and notice when I drag it to the timeline and it hits, it snaps. I get that blue line saying that the two are touching. So I know that they're touching and I can let go. And now when I go from one clip, I can go straight to the other clip. OK, and I can choose as much or as little as that as I like by trimming again. So I could trim from one end if I like. I can even trim from the other end. So I can trim up and then just simply move them to match again. So I'm going from one clip to another. But one of the lovely touches of Vegas Pro is if I just grab this second clip and start to pull it over the first clip, I'm creating something called a cross dissolve. And if I just click here and push play, just watch on the screen here, you'll see that it dissolves from one to the other 
really nicely. So that's a cross dissolve with no work whatsoever. So this is an introduction to Sony Vegas Pro. Notice that you can also add in things like audio files. So if I wanted to bring in an audio file, I could drag it down and then I've got a piece of audio that's sitting underneath and I can play that as well. Selecting my timeline panel down here, if I just hit my space bar, you can see what my volumes are doing. I can hear things. I've got the music underneath. And you can see that in no time at all, you could build a really interesting project really quickly, including there's a little tab here that called Media Generators. As I say, don't worry about it. We're going to go through all of these. But I've got one called Titles and Text, and I can just drag down a title. And notice I can drop it above the present video. When I let go, it allows me to type in my text, and it's giving me a new video layer. And I could just highlight that and type C Houses which is the place that this was actually taken. Now I can't see it because my, my current time indicator isn't over it. So if I go over it, there you go. I can see what it is and I can change its font and I can change its size and I can add sh drop shadows and do all kinds of animations. So as you can see, you can build up a project really quickly in Vegas Pro and that's one of its big strengths. It's a very quick and easy to use video editor that you can produce excellent projects very quickly indeed. In the next tutorial, we'll have a little chat about organizing and saving projects.